next on Inside Indiana Business. This is and always will be. Next on Inside Indiana Business. This is and always will be the greatest spectacle in racing. This is the Indianapolis 500. Indiana's premier event and venue driving big bucks into the state's bottom line. New numbers out on just how valuable the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is to Indiana. Plus, Indiana flexing its muscle in the health sciences space. How the state landed a prestigious biotech hub and its potential impact on growth and new Hoosier jobs. And we crisscross the state in search of the best food and drinks taking flight in Indiana, including this staple in Huntington. For 25 years, we have been Indiana's business news leader. This is IBJ Media's Inside Indiana Business with Gary Dick. Presented by Elevate Ventures and Indiana University. Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick coming to you this week from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And we begin the show with the big economic impact in the business of motorsports, in particular here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You know the roar of the engines are silent now that uh, another IndyCar season is in the books. But the economic engine that is the Indianapolis Motor Speedway continues to run full throttle. And for the first time in a decade, we now have numbers that underscore just how significant that impact is for Indianapolis and Indiana. This is the place if you want to see race car drivers um, or just longtime race fans, it's a great place. And Liz, thanks so much for being an anchor in the community and allowing us to be here. The report was released in the shadow of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway at the iconic Charlie Brown's Restaurant on Main Street in the town of Speedway, an area directly benefiting from the economic firepower of IMS. The greatest spectacle in racing, this is the Indianapolis 500. The study from the Indiana Public Policy Institute shows IMS is responsible for a more than $1 billion economic impact on Indiana and nearly 8,500 full-time equivalent employees. As we've always said, this team shows up in a big way. The, the month of May alone contributing more than $566 million to the economy. The numbers are essentially double what they were the last time an economic impact study was conducted 10 years ago. Let's not start with the number. Indianapolis Motor Speedway President Doug Bowles tells me that reflects a vision to grow the IMS impact on track and far beyond. It's been a lot of growth and our business models changed a little bit. Obviously the core events, the Indy 500 and our NASCAR event, those are still here, but we're a lot more active on track than we've ever been. So we do close to 150 days of on track activity. And many of those events are events that the community doesn't even know takes place in terms of a fan side. But people like Main Street, hotels downtown, when people are coming in for those, they stay there. So really what we wanted to understand was what was that doing for the community because it's a lot different than where we were in the past. The other thing I think is really interesting is just the vision of Roger Penske. So 2020, we're closed down, we can't have anything happen. He could have completely shuttered the place for a while, but he's got this ability to see around corners. And Roger Penske said, let's invest in the facility so that when we can open back up to fans, that experience is so much better. We have more flexibility to have other events. That'll drive revenue, that'll drive community folks to the community. So I think that's another reason we were able to elevate it so much. Another element of the report uh, on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway talks about the impact on Indiana, not mm -hmm. just Indianapolis. So what we were really interested in doing was making sure that our whole state was excited about this because the Indianapolis Motor Speedway isn't an Indianapolis asset, it's a state of Indiana asset. And when I'm out talking to somebody in Vanderburg County or when Roger's speaking to somebody in Gary, Indiana, and, talk, and they talk about what the city of Indianapolis benefits from, but really what the state of Indianapolis benefits from uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, we want the state to feel good about it too. So that was really important to look at what is real true new dollars to the state of Indiana. And Bowles says some long talked about big projects will fuel future growth and economic impact. Well, one of them is gonna happen in 18 months, uh, our museum, 
which is going through that renovation, is a big economic driver to this community, even the winter months. So the conventions are in, the people that come out, they stop, or you're driving through town, you stop at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and go to the museum. So in 18 months, that huge renovation and restoration of that facility and the opening of this state-of-the-art motorsport museum, I think, is the first thing you're going to see. Now that we've got that up and going, now we've got 700 acres of property outside of our 300 that is the Speedway. So starting to think about how do we work with the city, how do we work with the town of Speedway to think about what's the next step in development there that not only drives people to our events, but drives people to Indianapolis and to Central Indiana. How far along are those conversations? It's been talked about for a long time, a hotel, a conference center, all kinds of things have been talked about. How far along are those things? So when Roger bought the Indianapolis Motor Speedway 2019, we don't know COVID's coming. That was one of the things Roger really wanted to do. When COVID happened, happened he said, let's step back. Let's make sure that the core of our business is healthy. That's the Indianapolis 500. That's the Brickyard Weekend. That's all the other things that go on. Once we get ourselves back to that, then we can start having those conversations again. So we're just on the verge of getting back to that point where we can really start having those conversations with the city and with the town. What can we do to really help generate more jobs, generate more tourism here in the state of Indiana? Certainly very big economic impact numbers here and more to come going forward. But you know, this place uh, holds a very special place in the hearts of those who've conquered it. This was the one he wanted more than anything else in the world. And here it comes, Mario. The checkered flag of victory. He's done it. For uh, American racers, I mean, that's, that's our mecca. That's, uh, that's uh, like a shrine for us. Racing icon Mario Andretti sounding off on his affection for the Indianapolis 500 and IMS on our Business and Beyond podcast last year during our Business at the Brickyard coverage here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You can hear the full interview with Mario at InsideIndianaBusiness.com. And up next, the feds like what they see in Indiana when it comes to the tech sector. When we come back, Indiana's latest big get to become a regional hub for innovation, this time in the biotech space. I wouldn't want to miss the opportunity to say congratulations on Gary Dick Inside Indiana Business's 25th anniversary. For me, throughout the entire, from, from year one, uh, he's had and the, the organization has had a special place in our community. It helps in a very important way keep viewers and the citizens of central Indiana and increasingly around the state aware of what's going on in the business community and I don't think anybody does it better. So we're really happy to add our congratulations to Gary. Well, just a stone's throw away from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway sits Allison Transmission, a longtime business anchor in this community and a global leader in technology for more than 100 years. It's home to the world's first heavy-duty transmission. And just last year, Allison opened a multi-million dollar state-of-the-art innovation center in Speedway. Indiana also gaining validation as a leader in biotech. And this week, big validation for Indiana's biotech movement as the federal government designated Indiana one of about 30 regional biotech hubs. This is big news, and our Business of Health reporter Kylie Valletta is standing by just a few miles from here at the 16 Tech Innovation Park with what it means. Kylie. Thanks, Gary. 16 Tech is known as a nerve center for collaboration among Indiana's strongest sectors, which makes it a great place to talk about Indiana being named a hub for biotechnology. Joining me now is Melina Kennedy, CEO of the Central Indiana Corporate Partnership. Thanks for being here today. Yeah. Very happy to be here. It's exciting. It's great news. Many have said that this designation, a big part of it came because Indiana's collaborative spirit. So let's start with that. Talk a little bit about Indiana's collaborative spirit. That's exactly right. It's exciting to be one of the 31 selected out of more than 400 applications. Um, and Indiana does have a long history of great collaboration of academic institutions, of business, of uh, community coming together, and that's what CICP is all about, is helping bring these three entities together to collaborate, drive innovation, and economic prosperity. So Indiana has been doing life sciences manufacturing for a long time. A big part of this is focused on biotech manufacturing. 
So this really just steps on the gas pedal. Talk just a little bit about that. Step on the gas pedal, that's a perfect way to put it. We have all the bones in place and we have great recognition already for our leadership in life sciences manufacturing. We're actually the number one exporter of pharmaceuticals in the whole country. And we have giants like Eli Lilly doing great work and we also have um, great businesses all across the spectrum doing um, great innovation right here at 16 Tech and beyond. So this is stepping on the gas to really uh, highlight our assets, more collaboration, more innovation, innovation to drive better economic prosperity ahead. All right, so Indiana is now eligible to compete with 30 other designated hubs in the U.S. That's a lot of competition. So do we have an edge? We absolutely do. So we've made it through this first round, and, and that's very exciting. But building on the spirit of collaboration and the assets we have here, Throughout the entire continuum of innovation at the beginning, we're standing here in the 16 Tech District. The Indiana Biosciences Research Institute, for example, is doing discoveries right here in this building, um, all the way to manufacturing in our leading edge right here in Indiana. A lot of people don't know that we are the only place in the world that manufactured all three COVID vaccinations. And these are the kinds of things that will be recognized, we hope, moving forward to the next step. Talk to us just a little bit about what went into this. This wasn't just a CICP application. There are a lot of players on this team. Well, and that's really building on our strength, that there were so many partners that came together. The um, Applied Research Institute, ARI, helped lead the application. Um, CICP bringing in our strength of the CEOs of the most prominent companies, but also uh, the higher education institutes, IU, Purdue, Notre Dame, and also the single largest accredited community college in the whole country, Ivy Tech, played an important role, plus many other partners. So that was the, really the strength of our application, in part reflected by so many partners, CICP just being one. All right, a lot of money plugging into this, a lot of potential for money to plug into this, and what a great place to start here at 16 Tech where innovation really comes to life. Thank you for being here today and give us, giving us a bit more perspective. Thank you. Gary, back to you. All right, Kylie, thanks very much. A very big story. I know you'll be on top of it going forward. In constant sorrow. Well, increasingly, Indiana is providing a global platform for young people with an interest in careers in agriculture. The FFA bringing its 96th annual convention to Indianapolis, pumping roughly $40 million into the regional economy. That starts in the week ahead. Those young people wearing the traditional blue jackets descending on downtown Indy, well, this is an important step on their journey into careers in agriculture. We're launching them as productive citizens into their communities to give back, to create opportunities for others, but also in the world of feeding 9 billion people in 2050. Molly Ball, the president and chief marketing officer for the National FFA Organization, my guest on the next edition of the Business and Beyond podcast. Well, coming up next, we will get caught up with all of the business news, making headlines from Lake Michigan to the Ohio River, from Terre Haute to Richmond, and every nook and hoosier cranny in between. Stay with us. And the support therapy dogs give to people in the hospital. In this week's IBJ, a look at how Eskenazi Health is using a $1 million grant to expand its pet program. of the mechanic in those days was to watch behind and notify the driver when other cars were trying to pass. So I rigged up this little gadget. Well, the next time you look back to park your car, thank Ray Haroon, the winner of the very first Indianapolis 500. He invented what is believed to be the first rear view mirror back in 1911. Here's what's making news around Indiana, brought to you by the Indiana Association of Realtors, Indiana's 21,000 realtors, the neighbors you know, the experts you can count on. It is time to get you caught up now with news from around Indiana, and for that, we send it to Mary Rachel Redmond, who's standing by at White River State Park in downtown Indianapolis. Well, Gary, downtown Elkhart looking to become Northern Indiana's next big concert destination. The city with a proposal for a $40 million outdoor concert venue, similar in size to Everwise Amphitheater here at White River State Park, announced earlier this year. 
The seating capacity at this downtown Indy site is 6,000. The proposed Elkhart Amphitheater even bigger with 8,000 seats, which would make it one of the state's largest outdoor concert venues. So it's no surprise Elkhart Mayor Rob Robertson sees the project is not only a potential catalyst for housing and small businesses in his downtown, but also a nod to Elkhart's rich manufacturing history in band instruments and a number of other sectors that once made the northern Indiana City one of the most prosperous in the U.S. The one thing that's neat about this is that we are branded as a musical community. 40 years ago, Elkhart was the richest city per capita in the United States, leading manufacturing community in the United States because of RVs, recreational, recreational vehicles, um, uh, pharmaceuticals, because Alka-Seltzer was created here, um, and, uh, and band instruments. And so uh, we have kept recreational vehicles and band instruments uh, and in this with the Jazz Fest, it kind of uh, it, it enhances that branding in a way that fits. And so it's one thing to chase quality of place and quality of life uh, without having a link to who you are. This links to our legacy as a musical community and creates a, a wonderful catalyst for us to be able to obtain uh, a, a place where people can live and enjoy themselves and create the experiences. Construction of the Elkhart Amphitheater could begin as soon as December. State troopers in Northwest Indiana have a new home and a new state-of-the-art crime-fighting tool. The new $30 million Lowell Indiana State Police Post and Forensics Lab opening this week. The lab gives troopers in the 15 county region more modern options in analyzing forensics. Nothing says welcome to Indiana quite like this. The state opening a new $40 million welcome center along I-65 in Jasper County. Upgrades include more parking, a dog park, and walking trails. The building's design unique to the region. It features wind turbines and a nod to Lake Michigan. A big get for the River Ridge Commerce Center along the Ohio River. The Cheesecake Factory announcing it has plans to build its third bakery production facility there. The $74 million plant will produce the chain's world-famous cheesecakes and bakery products for its restaurants and retailers. More than 200 new jobs expected from the deal. And Central Indiana dining staple Gray Brothers expanding its footprint. The IBJ reporting the Mooresville-based restaurant launching a franchise program for carryout dining across Indiana and other parts of the U.S. Attention South Bend Elkhart region. We've launched a new regional newsletter covering all things business in your area. All you have to do is sign up for free at InsideIndianaBusiness.com slash newsletters. And join Fifth Third Bank and IBJ for the 2024 Economic Forecast event on Tuesday, November 14th. Hear a succinct rundown of numbers-driven predictions for the economy, business, and markets. RSVP by November 7th at IBJ.com slash events. Coming up next, we're taking flight across Indiana to find the best Hoosier made food and drinks. The fall seasons can't miss destinations, making an impact on Indiana's economy. Well, from fresh juice flights to deviled eggs, it seems that people everywhere uh, are really beginning to take flight in the world of culinary exploration. In this month's Trendiana segment, we are diving into the growing trend of food and drink flights and where you can find them across the state. Yelp's Brittany Smith uh, joins us now from the Garden Table with more on this trend that really seems to be taking hold in the Hoosier State. Brittany. Thanks so much, Gary. We've seen more and more businesses across the state get creative with food and drink flights to top diners variety of items to choose from and it's worth mentioning just how photogenic and fun all of these dishes are we're kicking things off right here at the garden table you can see this beautiful juice light that they're offering diners you can choose the four different juices from their menu they have over six different offerings five ounces of each juice it's really fun because you get to sample each one before you pick it out they also have locations in carmel and broad ripple as, as well as the mass Ave location it's a really tasty spot Next up, we're going to Butter Sugar Flour in Trafalgar, Indiana. They are known for their coffee and dessert flight. A really fun pairing and great to share with friends. It's a bakery and coffee roaster that just opened up in the last few years. And they offer a monthly pairing of coffees and desserts. And this month, they're sampling up four perfect pairings. And a few of them include an apple pie latte, as well as a caramel corn macchiato. And they change with all the seasons. 
Next, we're heading to Huntington, Indiana for a Huntington Classic Mixed Kitchen, which has been around for over 120 years right there in downtown Huntington. They're best known for their bread and pork tenderloin, but folks also love their pie lights. And the Yelpers recommend trying out the cherry, the blueberry sour cream, and the sugar cream. You get three half slices of pie for the pie lights. Next up, we're going to Speedway, Indiana, to one of the newer businesses on Main Street, Founders Grounds Coffee, just a stone's throw away from the track. They have a beautiful rooftop patio that overlooks Main Street, a fun seating area, and they are known for their latte lights that change with the season. Some fun recent versions include a pumpkin cheesecake latte, even for uh, St. Patrick's Day, had an ice shamrock mocha, so they really get playful with it, and it gives you a reason to visit each month. Next up, we're going to Carmel, Indiana for Juniper on Main. This one's really great. It's a deviled egg flight. This business is known for bringing the flavors of South Carolina and Georgia to Carmel, and their menu is changing frequently, but they've got some great Southern dishes on it. Folks especially love that deviled egg flight appetizer that's trending in their Yelp reviews. They change each day, but some of the different toppings over the last few months have been strawberries to pulled pork to chimichurri sauce, all popped on top of, of the deviled egg. This is why folks keep coming back for more and they really love that new spot. Gary, I'm going to throw it back to you. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of the show from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as we explored the economic impact, the big economic impact of IMS and racing on the Indiana economy. I'm Gary Dick. Thanks for joining us. Go out and make it a successful week.